If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sin of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sin, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the prophet Joel. Oh, the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. The day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Let blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from old, nor will it be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. And relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged. Gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples? Where is their God? Here ends the lesson.
from Paul's second letter, the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on the day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. As servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance, afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Here ends the lesson. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Here ends the lesson. Ash Wednesday is one of two days designated by the Book of Common Prayer as days of fasting in our church calendar. They are also both designated as days of special devotion. So we are supposed to spend um, those days, and specifically this day that we are now in, um, in self-denial and um, um, repentance and thinking of the needs of others. And it may be more difficult this year because we find ourselves in a situation where uh, we are experiencing 
um, the denial of many of what is normal, many of the things that is normal in our lives uh, because of the pandemic. And yet um, it is very appropriate as we enter this season of Lent, as we enter this season of trying to remember uh, and refocus and um, rebuild our relationship with God and others, uh, that we take that time to uh, walk with God and build the relationship um, with God and focus on the needs of others. One of the things that is traditional this time of year is for people to think about um, doing the one loving act of um, making uh, uh, an outline of their final arrangements so that those people uh, who are left behind uh, will have an understanding of, of what uh, your desires are. And some people would think that that's about ego, and yet I think it's a very loving act and should be uh, performed in that way of helping those people know um, what you think would be a good representation of yourself. Uh, some people um, choose no representation at all. And yet um, the process of grieving is really um, uh, badly impacted by, by that because there's no way to uh, to begin that process of working through uh, grieving of the loss. And so I would commend to you that as we begin Lent, that you think about um, making some notations. Uh, please share them with, with me and we'll put them on file at the church uh, for what you think your final arrangements might be. And then secondarily, um, as we hear the readings today, uh, think about how we conduct our lives in ways that um, show forth to the world um, our Christian life and our life of a follower of Jesus, um, of proclaiming the God of love uh, for all people. Last week, uh, we had the Transfiguration as our uh, gospel reading, and um, I ended by, by suggesting that uh, we should be thinking about how we can be transfigured in the sight of others um, through a, a transformation of ourselves and how we live our lives and how we reach out to the, to the other people in this world who are in need of God's love. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sin, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penance and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a Holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer and fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's Holy Word, and to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before God, our Maker and Redeemer.
Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord, Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sin. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.